trying is um, Paul Mara Cross Paths. So Cross Paths is a, it's a joint venture with a good friend of mine. We'll, we actually call each other's brothers from a mother mother um, because we're very similar in a lot of ways with our ideals and so forth as well. So we met at a Sydney masterclass and then flew to Kefalonia with a good friend of mine, Alex Katsaris. And uh, we decided rather than bringing the variety back to Australia, because we didn't have really any climatical conditions that would suit Kefalonia and the way it's grown, we thought that we'd make a wine in Greece and give us an excuse to travel back to Greece and enjoy the, the lifestyle what Greece has to offer as well. And it's a variety of Ebola, indigenous to the island of Kefalonia. Um, so it's grown 850 metres above sea level. Um, it's a PDO, so it has to be dry grown, which is protected designation of origin. Um, it's grown on red clays with over limestone, um, and it's 850 metres lit, but the sea right below it. So you're getting a little bit of that sea salt on the palate as well, but you get that minerality of the, the limestone, um, but beautiful freshness. To me, it's, I mean, a lot of people describe it a little bit differently. To me, I'm getting almost like that lemon limes there, so that very much Riesling-esque with that minerality of a Chablis. So it sort of combined the two. Um, and I, I just love it. It's a, it's a beautiful wine. It's great with seafood. It's, um, you know, we, we sometimes just pour it straight over oysters. Um, you don't have to put lemon juice on it, just uh, even better. So, and if you don't like oysters, that's actually pretty tasty. And, uh, so, Maybe some kingfish. But yeah, look, a beautiful wine, a beautiful friendship with Gentilini. So it's a joint venture with Gentilini Winery in, on the island of Kefalonia. So it's, it's, at the moment, it's uh, it's predominantly one of our main whites that we do here because Barossa Valley doesn't really grow wide varieties that well. Now we're talking Barossa Valley floor, other than Eden Valley and Clare Valley, we do great Rieslings and Adelaide Hills, of course. Uh, but I'm playing around with alternative varieties now, like um, the Cypria varieties, Sinisteri, which is, is a white variety out of Cyprus that potentially would be ideal in these conditions. And then we can introduce more white varieties to our portfolio. Um, So this is our X range. So there's, there's three in the X range. So there's a white wine, a rosé, and a red wine. What does X? Well, we can't tell you, we have to keep it. It's, oh. it's, um, it's a trial wine. <laughs> so, the, the, you know, we, we've got to keep something a secret. So, it, um, so very good. <laughs> it's a variety that is um, of Greek origin. Okay. That is from Northern Greece and is quite unique in that you can make a sparkling, a white, a rosé, and a red from the same variety. Sorry. Mm, that's so it's okay. probably one of the only varieties that, so that, that sort of works with. Mm -hmm. It's so versatile. We, this is our first vintage of the XW, which stands for Project X White. Um, first, first time we've done it, we only did about 16 dozen of them, just as a little trial to see if we like it. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's very unique. Our winemaker is, Mm -hmm. wanting to do uh, a blind judging in black glasses yes. and giving it to his wine friends and he guarantees that they will all pick it as a red. This one here, what I love about this, this is, this is like Barolo, Barolo meeting Burgundy. Um, Alright, so it's, if you, on the nose if you smell it, it's just got the beautiful aromatics of Pinot Noir. And the colour. You know, you know colour, if you look at the colour and everything like that, it's, it's not too dense and so forth. But on the palette, it's got beautiful tannin structure, so it carries it right through. So it's like a, you know, a Nebbiolo, but it's, it's like a souped up Pinot Noir or Burgundy. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's easy so, to drink. That is the same group, just made three different ways. So this is our um, our other rosé. Um, I've been asking for a rosé for years because I, I actually quite like rosé. Um, I like dry rosés. I don't like, I, I like more of the French style rosé, I suppose. Um, and so Jason this year in 2021 said we would make a Sangiovese rosé. So we didn't pick this, or we didn't make a rosé because we had grapes that weren't good enough to go into red. We picked this specifically for rosé and made it into rosé about three weeks earlier than we picked our dry red Sangiovese that goes into the Melee and the Cellar Reserve Sangiovese. So we um, crushed it, put it into tank, and then when we picked the dry red, Jason took the first 400 litres of bleed off and 
fermented that and then blended that back into this rosé to give it a beautiful color, but to also give it a lot of um, that mid palette that Sangiovese sometimes can lack. And it's natural sweetness. So yeah, if you taste it on the palate, you think it's sweet, but it's actually not sweetness. It's, it's, this is almost bone dry, mm. it's only a very small percentage, but it's just the that fruit putting flavors. that fruit back into the wine, blending it in, gives it that beautiful sweetness through the mid palate. Um, so it's very easy drinking. It, uh, and it's, see the first one was, I, I classified that this first one, you said that little bit of saltiness, but also that Turkish delight character coming mm -hmm. through the palate. This one's more that strawberry character coming through. Yeah, so it's, it's a like strawberry lolly. bottle. Yeah, yeah lolly. So tell me about the bottle, it's original, it's beautiful. Well, we, um, as I said, it was the first year we did our Sangiovese Rosé, so we had to pick a bottle. And I got a few options and sat them all on the counter and tried to imagine what they would look like with rosé in it, which is very hard, mm -hmm. because I thought originally, this looked like a golf ball. And I thought, oh, that's so not going to work. Like it's... I actually loved it. But, but Paul and Jason ended up picking this bottle. And as we were, it was coming down the bottle line, one of the ladies who was working on the line said, oh my God, it looks like a strawberry. And, and it very, actually looks like a strawberry. Yes. And, it, and that actually goes with some of the flavors that you're tasting totally, yeah. in the wine. So mm -hmm. it, it just kind of fell into place. So Brasco's is a pizza bar in Adelaide and some good friends of ours and when they opened up about four years ago now, I think they approached us and said we want to sell your wines because we love your wines we did that for a while and then they said to Paul we want a wine of our own so can you make us a wine an Italian varietal that we can have our label our name on it and we can sell it in the pizzeria and Paul said yeah, yeah sure so he put together a the original one was a 50% Montepulciano and 50% Graziano blend Yep. And it just, it worked. It was a beautiful wine. Um, this new vintage of 2019 is 95% Montepulciano, 5% Derive. Yep. We don't grow these grapes. We buy them from a good friend of ours um, who grows the Montepulciano. So this one just won a trophy at the Australia New Zealand Boutique Wine Show. Australia New Zealand Boutique Wine Show, yes. Mm -hmm. um, for the best Italian red of the show. So it's a Nero Diavola which is from the island of Sicily. Um, we planted it in what year? 2012. Um, our first Rough. vintage of it was 2015. And Paul really kind of fell in love with the variety when he went took a group of growers over to the island of Sicily and saw how it was grown and sort of sampled many of the products. Um, and where we have it planted up on our vineyard is sits about, about 280 meters above sea level and we get some really hot northerly winds that come up to that end of the vineyard. Whereas in Sicily, they get the hot winds off of the coast okay. of Africa and it, it's hot. And this variety just kind of is able to Lava withstand that, that heat. <laughs> yeah, and the Melee is the fight for supremacy. This one here is a blend and that's why we call it the Melee. We named it after the kids because they always fought. They're better now. So, and, it's, <laughs> and if, if you look at that, that's an original painting on the front. So you can see it up on the wall just up here. So I downloaded my brain to an artist and uh, she came back with that. So I just sent her an email saying, this is what I'm looking for. I want arms, I want legs, I want color, I want everything. And then a bit of cycling, because I love cycling. And she came back with that. And I was I was really impressed with what she came back with. And and that wine's actually grown over the years, hasn't it? It's, uh, it's, been, a, it's really been a really popular wine. We sell out every time we've, we've made it. In the, the early days, it wasn't a Sangiovese dominant wine. Um, it was, I was just really trying to blend varieties that I thought were looking great in that given year. So we started doing it in 2010, um, whereas now it's always going to be 75% Sangiovese, then 20% Shiraz and 5% Malbec. Uh, and we think that style, we've just nailed a style, I think that really suits our melee and where we want the melee to be. Our entry point Shiraz before this one was at $60, so the Sinner Shiraz, which is our original wine that we made. Um, and then we were having a lunch and on the young, we need to fill a gap in our portfolio with Shiraz because mm. the majority of our vineyards, we still dominate in Shiraz. So we needed to have something that competes with a lot of other wineries or producers here in the Barossa Valley and the Clarin Valley and so forth as well. So, and then we thought, you know, we're in the, we're in the sub region of Marananga. Um, and then Mara and Marananga, it just, it blended so well. So Mara, Mara and So when we came up with the name, my dad actually came up with the name Palmara, 
I wanted it to be Mara Paul, but it didn't really work. So <laughs> Paul Mara was what it became. Um, and on our honeymoon in Crete, Corfu, sorry, Corfu. I just get the C's confused. On the go. Corfu. Did you take Crete? We <laughs> found this, these gorgeous little, this little statue. We We, when we bought this on our honeymoon, it was like, oh, this is really cute. We had no idea that we were going to start a wine label. But when my dad said, well, what about Paul Mara? We were like, oh, we can use our little statue because it's Paul and Mara. Cinna means the combining of like hearts and minds in Greek. So this statue sort of just kind of worked. And, and this became our little... It's the twins. Our, our little um, logo. logo, for lack of a better word, because we were only making a Shiraz at the time, and it was only a Cinna Shiraz. So um, because this is a Shiraz, we decided that we needed to sort of stay true to that, keep some conformity um, with our Shiraz labels and, and use our little person. The first wine we produced was the Sinner Shiraz. So when Mara came up with a story about, you know, our emblem, Sinner, Two Hearts, Two Minds, Father Moore coming up with the name Paul Mara, everything coming together. Um, it was a companionship, Two Hearts and Two Minds, which is the term Sinner. Everyone thought it was a sinner because I was a sinner as I was growing up, but it was nothing to do with that. So, and, and that's, and all we wanted to do is when the vineyard made range, we keep a little bit of fruit for ourselves, make a little bit of wine, and just see what sort of style of wine we can make under our own brand. But having one wine in a brand doesn't really work. Hence the reason why it's evolved and expanded quite a bit now to alternative um, products and varieties and so forth as well. But. That was our, I suppose that's our baby. That's that's what we started yeah. off with first, and that's yeah. very close to our hearts. Um, but it's a wine that can age. It's 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 made to be able to appreciate it early, but I reckon this wine can take on a real journey. You reached the pinnacle. We had for Shiraz. So this is the pinnacle of Shiraz. It's for us. So this, this comes off 100 year old wines, so off another vineyard that rejuvenated, that was almost dead, mm. brought it back to life. Um, you know, what, what I love more than anything else, and you know, I think Jason initially goes, because I always, I wanted a word that encapsulates the whole is greater than the sum of all parts. And he goes, Aristotle, he was a philosopher, and he goes, you agree, you should have known that on the, the good point. Um, needless to say, we went with the term Aristotle because it just, you know, you got to include yep. wine making. You got to include viticulture. You want to. You want to include everyone soil, involved. The soil. Everyone involved. You in can't disappoint with such a name. No, so you can't. Rich. And you ha it I has to be at that level. Mm -hmm. And okay. it's it's different to the sinner. It's a completely stylistically, it's different style. We use different oak in this one versus the sinner. This is using a little combination, predominantly American oak, but it's also got a little bit of French oak in it. This to me is more of a Barossa style. Yeah. Red. Um, were able to announce that we won Wine of the Year with Wine State Magazine. And we also won um, Best Cabernet for the year. Awesome. Yeah, so that's a huge accolade for us. Awesome. Because we're, you know, we're quite small and this wasn't a huge production. So for us to be able to show with a Barossa Cabernet, so not a Barossa Shiraz, but a Barossa Cabernet to win Wine of the Year. 2018 won. 2018. Yep. Mm -hmm. Really. So first vintage we've done of it. Yeah. First vintage and already in the wine. First vintage and we won. I, I think Cabernet is all to do with the dirt, the soil that you've got. You know, if you've got good soils, it gives you, you you're in the front foot to be able to produce great Cabernets. And so I needed a word that represents soil. And as much as the potage doesn't sound like it represents soil, in Greek it does. Because in Greek it's three words, up with the year, meaning from the earth. All right, so Clever, huh? when I spoke about <laughs> red clays and um, shale and um, ironstone and, and quartz, this typifies all that. So you can see sort of on the label, it has those different layers, layers. layers of soil. But with that range mm. and that one that sits above them, you can see his head and shoulders above the other two. There's there's a there's a general theme running with the colour of the labels. Yes. Everything. So and it's just a coincidence that they all started with an A. We've never been thought of that. Oh yeah, we didn't think about that. Pure coincidence. 
everyone goes, oh, because it's A grade fruit. And I said, well, it's I, I fruit because it's iconic. But it's, um, we think it's iconic because we think it sits above A grade. You know, it's just, we don't leave anything to chance. We, we manage the vineyards to make sure that we give ourselves the best opportunity of making the best wines. And that's the key. So Mother Nature's gonna offer you a certain season. We just, we manipulate the vines and try to get the best out of that given year. And um, you know, in 2020 really offers, that's why we've come out with that. It's um, the Greek term, it's, it's actually a, a name of a person too, that you, you know, if you're in Greece and someone's called Aridi, but the true meaning of Aridi or Aredi uh, is in search of excellence. So my- There again, you can't get that wrong. <laughs> no, and the thing is, it, right through, like with what we all do, you know, and, and I know in viticulture, like, I'm always trying to, you're always learning, you're always trying to do the best in the vineyard, you're always trying to achieve the best. Jason's doing the same thing in winemaking. You're searching, you know, to do the best you can. Everything we do as a team is, is trying to do the best we can, you know. So we're, we're searching for that, that point where we are searching for excellence. And we thought the name of it here, just, it just, I suppose it, it aligns to what we, what we want to stand for. You know, and um, so we put like the Greek spelling, yeah, behind it. Yeah, behind it. So, and my, I've used this right through my career with penfolds. Is things of quality have no fear of time. All right. So it's a favorite saying. I, I love it because as a kid, I always loved certain brands. Mont Blanc is one, right? Mm -hmm. Always love Mont Blanc because you know I've always wanted one, and they're going. It stands for something. It's, it's a presence about it. I've always liked Porsche or Porsche because it, you know, it's a car that it stands the test of time. It's just, it's one of those things. There's, there's certain things in this world, water from crystal. It, there's certain things that will always, no matter what turn of the economic cycle you're in, people are always going to want it. They're mm -hmm. always going to want it. It's, it's like some, you know, um, Romney Conti's or something like that, or some Burgundy wines, anything like that. It's just people are going to always want it regardless of where we're in and the time and place or wherever we are. They're always going to want something. Always sort of holds that value and holds mm. every, you hold it in high esteem. 